So, Father, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we want to hear from you today. And I pray that, Lord, as I share, that you'd come upon me in a mighty way. And, Lord, that my words would become life. As my words go forth, Father, I pray that you will anoint them and that they will penetrate and go deep into the hearts of men and women. And, Lord, that they would get a revelation or an understanding, even beyond what I'm saying. But, Lord, that you would go beyond. You'd do the exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. Because, Lord, your desire is to set captives free. Your desire is to see people uh, conquering and overcoming and, and being victorious in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. I want to say it's really exciting to be a Christian. We've got this precious book that's full of promises. It tells us everything that we need, everything that we can do. It talks about victory. It talks about the enemy. It talks about what Jesus has done. It speaks about the blood that was shed. It speaks about the anointing, the power, what God did to Satan when he raised Christ from the dead. And yet many times the church itself is sort of like a limp rag. It's, you don't see the power. You don't see the victory. You don't, you don't see the anointing. And I believe that God, by His Spirit, is not going to allow us to say like we are. By the way, I want to say a big welcome to Keith over there. I forgot. I meant to mention it before. Keith was one of our pastors at Villa Wheeler. Great man of God. Love him. He's been a, he's 92 at the moment, I think. Going on for 93. Good on you. Hmm? Yeah, Ken's dad there. But... Uh, they did a lot of work out west there. Great to see you here this morning. Anyhow, so the Spirit of God, I believe, wants to move, and He's not going to just allow us to stay like that. I believe that He said, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it. I'm going to empower my church. I'm going to come, and even we've been singing today, I'm going to come like a wind. I'm going to come like a rain. I'm going to come like oil. I'm going to come. But you see, the thing is, He's going to come. And when he comes, will he find faith? I believe that God's going to do a stirring and a, he's going to start to minister to us and he's going to start to awaken us because uh, there's so many things that have gone wrong. See, when Constantine came into power, he, 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 he made a, a, a decree that, the, that Rome would now come, become a Christian nation. But what he did was he took the spiritual people out of leadership and put his own generals and, and, and uh, different people into that place. What they did was they took the spirit out and they brought in a different rule. They brought, actually, they brought in the satanic. And there was a mixture and the church uh, died and there was a, there was a, a drifting away from the, from the power, from the anointing, from the truth. You see, what God's got to do, He's got to restore truth. The truth is what will make you free. A lot of us, we've heard different things. We've heard excuses and, and because, you know, in our life and the way we are, there's none of us here that are, that, you know, are perfect. None of us, every, many of us here have, have made some tremendous mistakes. Some of us have done horrible things. I, I, my life, I, I didn't get saved until I was 27. And really, I was a wreck. I was a wreck when, Mar when Nancy and I got, got uh, married. We went from wedlock to deadlock. You know, it was a shambles. It was a mess. And I, and I did things, and, and things happened in my life. And, and I, I can imagine you're, you're, you could be similar. And so now I'm, I'm born again, and, 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 and I'm saved. But somehow or other, the enemy keeps flooding back my memories and, and things of failure and defeat. And, and, I, and I guess from time to time, I, I really don't feel like I deserve to go to heaven. I don't, don't deserve the goodness of God. I don't deserve it. You see, if we think like that, if we continue to think like that, we're fighting an uphill battle. Because when the Spirit of God starts to speak to us and the Spirit of God gets around our life and the Spirit of God comes and, and loves on us, there's, a, there's that thing that, that stops us from really receiving it. I want to tell you, we've got to have our minds renewed. You've got to have some changes. If you believe you don't deserve to be blessed or to be loved by the Lord, 
If you don't believe we're supposed to, we're, we deserve to be free from bondage and pain, if we don't believe that, let me say it again, we are fighting an uphill battle. God wants to move in mysterious ways. He is an amazing God. The Bible says this, it says, uh, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God wants to show himself strong. And what he does is he picks the weaknesses of, of humanity and he empowers us with his strength and causes us to overcome. There's a story that's found in the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 43. Saul and all of his generals saw the Goliath and they ran to their tents. They had no answer. David, a shepherd boy, comes with some cheese and some figs and a few other things and he sees what's going on and he makes a statement, I will fight him. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Even Goliath said, when he saw young David coming towards him, am I a dog that you come to me with a stick? He looked at David and, and said that he dismayed him. He, 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 he ridiculed him. He cursed him. He, he, he poured his fury out upon him. He did everything he could to try to belittle him. But God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Am I a dog? Did you come to me with a stick? He says, no, I come to you with a promise. A promise that I received from my Father, from my Lord. And I believe that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I don't come against you with a stick or a stone, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And you see, this is what we've got to understand, church, is that we may even look like as if we're insignificant, inferior. Some people look at me and they say, look at the old silly old coot. I want to tell you, I want to say it right now, age has got nothing to do with it. Age has got nothing to do with it. I pray that if I live to be 120, that I'm still as sprightly as I am today. Amen. Shakabundi. And I pray that I'm still as much in love with Jesus as I ever was. Because that's all that really matters. It's got nothing to do with what we think. You see, if we don't allow our minds to be renewed, our subconscious will be at war with what the Word of God says, with the truth. God told Moses about a promised land a land that he had already prepared for him. Unfortunately, there were some other people that were living in there. But if you just keep your eyes on the things that are negative about a statement that God gives you, you'll never go in and possess it. You can't keep looking at the enemies of life. You've got to look at the promise that God gave him. God said, I've given you this land. It is yours and it will be an inheritance. You're going to divide it. It's your land. But you see, when the spies went in, and let me remind you that these spies weren't just nobodies. They were all leaders. They were all leaders and they should have known better. We've got to be careful today who we're listening to. We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Because I want to tell you that when the enemy comes, God will rise up and he will speak to you. And he will speak truth into your life. He will not, does not want you to be uh, conned by some lie. He wants you to know the truth. These guys, all they could see was the enemy. They forgot the promise. They forgot the promise. And you see, when you look at the enemy, your subconscious clicks in. How many people know that you speak to your subconscious or your subconscious speaks to you very much? I'm not talking hocus pocus here. I'm talking about the conversations that we have when nobody else is listening. The conversation that we're having when there's no voice. The conversation that goes on on the inside of you 
that starts to say to you, you'll never make it. You're no good, or you're this, or you're that. The doctor gives you a report that this is what's going to happen. So if we listen to the doctor, if that's all we listen to, you'll never get your eye on the promise. The promise will not, it'll be null and void. Jesus has already delivered us, friend. He has already healed us. We are already free, amen. But there's a war that goes on and it's in our subconscious. Our subconscious will start to declare. And you see, all they could see was the enemy. Yes, what God said was true, so they put that aside, but the land is filled, it's inhabited, there's walled cities, there's this, there's that, and there's all that. And so what happens now is the subconscious starts to say who we are. And there's times there when in our natural we think who we are, and you see what they thought was we're nothing but grasshoppers. We're nothing, we're no good, we're no match. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot overcome this enemy because we're no match. Friend, of myself, I can do nothing, but with my God, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. I know myself I can't, but I tell you what, we've got a power, we've got the Holy Ghost. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So we've got to come with an identification of who Jesus really is and what He's done for us. God told him about the promised land, it's yours for the taking. But the spies came back with a negative report and they never went in. You see, their insecurity shut up the reality of what God was trying to do for them. You see, it's how you see yourself. You've got to see yourself through God's eyes. I can't look at myself through my eyes. I've got to be able to... And the only way I know what God's eyes are is what this Word says. And it's what this Word says is how I have to see myself. I am blessed. I am washed. I am cleansed, amen. I am, I am touched by the power of God. It's an amazing thing. How you see yourself. You see... A girl can, can see herself, a girl with anorexia, she, she sees herself as being fat. And it doesn't matter what you say to her, you will not convince her that she's not fat. You see, her thinking will kill her. Her wrong thinking will kill her. Wrong thinking will kill her. What God is wanting to do in your life. If we think wrong, we will get a wrong result. But if we can think right, that's good. Wrong thinking will kill God's provision for your life. The Bible says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered the heart of man the things God has prepared for us. See, God has already prepared something for me. There's things there that God has prepared for you. Your eye hasn't seen them, your ear hasn't heard about them, hasn't even entered into your thinking, but God has prepared them for you. And they're revealed to you by the Spirit. For those that love Him, the promised land was already prepared. It was already there for Him. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Only believe all things are possible. Your subconscious speaks to you more than you realize. That's why God spoke in Joshua to him. And he said, Joshua, meditate on the word. Don't let it pass your eyes. Don't let it out of your sight. Meditate on it. What is meditating? Meditating is, is, is dreaming and thinking and speaking and, and, and talking about what God has done for you. Letting the Word of God wash over you. That's what we do of a Sunday afternoon. We just go and lay on the floor at, at, at our hub. You're more than welcome to come along. Nobody's speaking to anybody. We're just allowing the presence of God 
We're just meditating on God. We're meditating on His goodness. Meditating on what God wants to do. And, you, and as you meditate, you start to build something in your own life. You start to paint a picture or a tapestry of who God really is. You see Him in His power. You see Him in His glory. You see, you, you just start to, you might get a scripture, so you read it and you start to let it happen to you. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus is the answer. I love that song, Give Me Jesus. I just want Jesus. That's all we need. That's all we need. The only way to consistently be kingdom uh, thinking is to view reality from God's Word. You see, God wants to build His kingdom. We must change our thinking to kingdom thinking. God wants, as we read the Word, we start to see His kingdom. We view the reality of God's Word. We realize that we're not bound to the natural, but God has made the supernatural available to us. Supernatural power of His kingdom is, is all around us. God says He, you know, inhabits the praises of His people when God comes. Those who allow God's Word to change our wrong thinking. This is how transformation takes place. I want to read something to you that really challenged me. Just reading this this morning, but again, it, it began to challenge me. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore by... I've got, sorry. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, be not conformed to this world. You see, when Constantine came in, that began to take place. The church began to be conformed to the world. A whole new thing that God never ever intended was brought into the church. Many to today, the church is run with a world system. It's run to try to please. It's run to try to do this or try to do that. But friend, we have to be kingdom-minded. We've got to come back to that. It says not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me just read this to you again. Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed is to change from world thinking to spirit thinking. Change from natural thinking, logic thinking. Logic is one of our biggest enemies because logic is sense. It wasn't sense for a, a young boy, a young shepherd boy, to go out to fight a Goliath. It didn't make sense. Logic said no. Even in their logic, they tried to put an armor on him that he couldn't even, didn't know how to wear, how to work or whatever it might be. They tried to bring him back into logic. If he would have wore that armor out to fight that Goliath, he would have got slain. He had to go with the realm of the spirit that he knew. He had to go in the way of the power of God. And as he went out there, it was the anointing that touched Transformed is to change from world thinking, from natural thinking to spirit thinking. The, re the renewed mind that reflects the reality of an amazing provision that God has made for us. If I don't think like that, if I just think of my natural ability, we will fail. I will fail. 
I've got to go beyond that. And so when you pray and when you believe, you start to think outside the natural. And when we start to sing that song today about Him coming like rain, see, your imagination has got to somehow or other get inside you that, that we see, I don't just see a sprinkle, I see a deluge. I see an outpouring. I see everything around on the ground being saturated. I see the rivers beginning to flow. I, I see something more. comes like the wind. Just don't feel a gentle breeze. But you've got to find a wind. And many, many years ago I had a vision. And, and though I'm not given to visions all that much, this vision was like a wind blowing through a field. And as the wind blew through the field, it picked up the, the waste paper and the, the rubbish that was laying in that field, and it just swept it all away. But the, 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 the grass was just waving and swaying in the, in the wind. You see, that wind that's going to come, it's going to come with cleansing. It's going to take out the rubbish I don't know about you, but I believe that the church needs the wind of God. It needs the fire of God again to burn. It's going to come like fire. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Fire is going to come from heaven. The fire of God is going to touch us, friends. We will see a revival. Not because, you see, that is what God has promised. I've got to keep my eyes on the promise. Not what I see. If I look at the church today, I say, God, it is hopeless. Excuse me. Because it's not about doing what God really wants to do. We are so fragmented. There's only one church. There's not a multiple of churches. There's one church. There is not an AOG paddock in heaven or a COC or a DOG or a whatever. <laughs> there is one paddock, hallelujah. See, when God comes, He's going to come with fire. He's going to come with power. He's going to come with authority. If I just look at the problems, if I just look at the problems, then all I see is hopelessness. But you see, I've got to lift my eyes. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. See, as we lift our eyes above what we see in the natural, if all I see is the, is the, is the negativity, the walled cities, I'll never go in. But you see, my Lord says to us, he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit. It's going to come like the wind. It's going to come like the rain. It's going to come like fire. Hallelujah. I had no idea that I was singing that song, by the way, but it's certainly helping me have a preach. <laughs> I got my little mate here, glory to God. He was having a ball this morning, playing his air guitar. You know, he's, he's <laughs> getting involved. Come on, you, we've got to get out of ourselves, friends. You know that your flesh is your worst problem? As lovely as it looks now. <laughs> we've got to get out of ourselves and get loosed up a little bit. Comes like the oil. I don't know about you, but I need an oil change in the grease. <laughs> Anybody else need one? Come on, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need to loosen it up. I need loosening. Come on. Come on. Cry out to God. I need a loosening. I need to be loose. I need to be loose. See, he, he, he promised, he said that in the last days, that's what he's going to do. He talked about this latter rain revival. It's going to fall on the just and the unjust. It talks to me about this multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. It speaks about a, a revival. It speaks about something dynamic and powerful that sometimes my natural mind cannot comprehend it. 
I've got to get my eyes off what I see and I've got to get my eyes onto the realm of the Spirit where revelation can come, where I can grab hold of something that's more dynamic and more powerful than anything of the natural, amen. The power, the anointing, and the victory of the cross of Calvary. Jesus is going to triumph. He's going to be victorious. He's going to rule and reign. Our lives and our thinking and the words and our words. See, words are something that you've got to be careful of. Your words will destroy you if they're not full of faith. Our words and all this, our lives, everything has got to come into alignment and agreement with God's promise for our lives. This can happen for you today. This can happen for you today. How do I renew my mind? How do I, how do I renew it? It begins with, with repentance. Not, not a repentance that we spoke about when we, when we get saved and we repent of sin. Well, what I believe is that the church needs repentance today that we will turn from where we were going to a whole new way of living. Repent from wrong thinking. Repent from wrong works. Repent from things that we'd be going after that we shouldn't go after. You see, repent means to go back, to return. To go, R-E, that part of repent, R-E means to go back, to return, to go back to your first love, whatever it might be. Pent comes from the word, it gets the word penthouse the top floor. So repent, repent in this verse means to go back to more than enough. To go back to the supernatural. Go back to that kind of thinking instead of just get by. To go back from failure to God's mighty reality that says nothing is impossible to those who believe. When trouble comes, instead of going under, we go over. Amen? See, trouble will come. You're not Robinson Crusoe just because you've got a bit of trouble. Trouble comes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. So when trouble comes, instead of going under, instead of feeling sorry for ourselves, why don't we take a choice and go over? Why don't we just say, hey, I'm going to leave this behind. See, you have to change the way you think and speak. Then these sort of things will start to happen. In John 3.3 3, it says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So there's something that happens when we born again that God wants to reveal to us. But somewhere on the journey, we get sidetracked. And we start to live a religious life instead of a reality life. We've got a form of godliness, but we've got no power. We've got a sort of a, well, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at and I do this and I do that. But God wants to take us to a place where we realize that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover that we'll begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can speak in other tongues. We touch any deadly thing and shall by no means hurt us. We can cast out devils. You see, when you're born again, you start to see the kingdom of God. But if the enemy has got in and the message takes away from that. See, I don't know if I can say this. But too often, the preacher wants to bring the attention to themselves. So you become reliant on him. Friend, don't put your trust in me. Put your trust in him. Put your trust in him, amen. Trust him only and him only. I will let you down for sure. But you see... Unless one is born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. 
What does that mean? It means when you're born again, something so dynamic, something so powerful, so supernatural, so awesome, so amazing happens that it almost becomes unbelievable. See, when I was 27, I was a mess. But I went up to the front and I gave my life to Jesus. Something so dynamic and so supernatural, powerful, came into my life that I did not realize and did not understand what was going on. I just know that immediately my life began to change. And immediately things started to happen. But you see, what happens after that is Mr. Goody Goody Two Shoes gets around your life and you get so excited and you're so excited about God and, you, and all you can talk about is Jesus and His goodness and His mercy and His love and His passion and all these sort of things. And, and Goody Goody Two Shoes comes up and says to you, Oh, you'll be right, mate. I used to be like you. You, you, you. Slow down. I wished I would have had the revelation that I've got today. I would have said, mate, you haven't slowed down. You died. Don't die till you're dead. See, when you got born again, something so dynamic and powerful came into our lives and it's to continually take you on and on and on and lead you and guide you and take you to the purpose and the plan that God has for your life. But if wrong thinking gets inside us, we get destroyed. It almost becomes unbelievable. Why don't we experience this dynamic power and live this more abundant life? I believe we, the church, have been lulled to sleep in Delilah's lap. Just keep everybody happy. We've drifted away. But you see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 sums it all up. He said, when I come to you, Paul speaking, I did not come with persuasive words. I look and speak didn't come like that. They came in the power of the Spirit. But your faith would not be established in the wisdom of man. You know, a long time ago they were eating donkey's heads. And there was a famine. And I want to tell you there's a famine of the Word of God and people are still eating donkey's heads. And half of them are behind the pulpit. We can't continue to eat donkey food. We've got to hear the word of God on it. We've got to have the anointing. We've got to have the presence of God. But your faith would not be established in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Father, I ask you today by your spirit that you come. Father, I pray your anointing over our lives today. Father, I pray that we would, we would allow change to come into our lives. Father, we would renew our minds, renew our thinking. Lord, a lot of the things that we think are important are not important. They are not important. Man, we've got a band up here. We've got a drummer. We've got a trombone player, whatever you call it. We've got a piano. And Do I say that? <laughs> I'll say it again so it makes it sound like we've got a bigger band. That's not important. What's important is the presence of God. I believe we had the presence of God this morning. I believe the presence of God was here this morning. I believe he's here to touch us, to save us, to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free. Father, help us to get away from the things that aren't important. We don't want to just look at the spies and the negatives. We want to look at the answer. We 
you're going to sing, Give Me Jesus. Give Me Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. I, I really want you today, I, I'm not even going to make an altar for, for different things, but it looks like we've already got one going in here. <laughs> but we will be praying for the sick. We will be praying for people that need a touch from God. But right now, I mean, I'm not having an altar for this because I just want you to reach out. I don't want your faith to be in somebody that I do, but what you do today. If you can reach out to Him and really cry out, Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Come like the wind. Come like the rain. Come like the oil. Come in my life. It's going to open this altar right now. And as we're singing this song, and there's a stirring going on inside of you. One shall put the flight 1,000 to 10,000, but I believe that the, the anointing, the presence of God can also quickly cause something to explode in the inside of you. Something about the prayer of faith, something about when people come into agreement, prayer of agreement. God's speaking to you this morning. I want you to quickly come. This is what we're singing. It's give me Jesus. Give me Jesus.